This video pertains to the repair of the internal board uh, circuitry for the Econo TIG uh, welding machine. Before we get started with that, I'm going to need to refer you to the technical manual that you will find out on the internet. I do not have it for sale and I do not have any copies of this. So you will have to get that before we get started uh, for points of reference. Uh, in lieu of that, I do have some notes that may help, but uh, it's better to have the the real thing and, and go through it. It does cost some money, but uh, it, I can't sell it to you. It's out there on the internet. So this is the board in question. Uh, right now, you might notice that it's completely unplugged and the fuse, which is a two amp MDL uh, number two slow blow fuse has been removed, mainly because that it blew. Uh, it didn't blow until I started replacing the filter capacitors, which is kind of a funny anomaly. But uh, that has led me to suspect that the voltage regulator is probably what's wrong. We're going to talk about that in just a second. How did I get to that point? Uh, first, I want to refer you to these handy-dandy sheets that I've made. Uh, you'll get a better copy of this than I'm showing you in just a second here. But um, you'll notice that there are some specific voltages that we're going to test for, like 18 and 30 on the various pins. 4 and 7 are connected together, and there's an additional test point for 15 volts on this. Uh, I have another one of these to go to. We're going to also use the RC7 test points. These are built into the board. They, they're not advertised as test points, but that's what they are. I'm noting that for number 3 pin... It'll need a jumper installed so that you can conveniently test for 70 volts, which is something I'd like to do. A lot of research and time has gone into this, uh, hundreds of hours as a matter of fact, since I'm an experimenter and circuit diagram gone over very carefully and noted. There will be some notes for errata for some things that are not on that board uh, connected or don't need to be. It depends on the year and the serial number of your Econo TIG, uh, which one you're looking at. Now I'm also going to include this handy dandy little sheet for testing that mine is filled out right now. It's got some rather screwy voltages on it. You can print it off or make your own, but what you're going to need to do is establish, uh, there's two, two modes of testing in this. One, idle and, and in TIG on position. And the second one is with the contactor actuated, either your foot pedal, your hand switch, whichever one. You, you want a set of those two voltages. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. And uh, once we get the voltages back, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to proceed with the repair. We're going to start, or I've already started actually, uh, replacing the filter capacitors. There are three. They're 1,000 UF and 50 volt. Um, I'm not quite finished with that, but I was about to point out the little voltage regulator in here. It's mounted directly to the board, which I think was a mistake, so there probably wasn't adequate cooling. Now, provided we get our, our voltages back, then we're going to start to suspect other parts on the board. I, I already have a reason to suspect that uh, something may have been damaged, uh, principally the operational amplifier here. I have a hunch that was exposed to too high a volts because I was getting 40 and 41 volts on any of the pins, and they say in the literature that that's not good. So first, we're going to leave this voltage regulator where it is and then replace it with the better version, the LN317HVT, which can take 60 volts of uh, various input to it. Uh, I think it's going to be a better deal and then include a, a heat sink on it, and then we'll go from there see if we can actually get uh, to a point of evaluating it the rest of the way. This video is also a companion to another one I've made regarding this machine. Uh, the uh, transformer burned on the secondary because this capacitor shorted. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video, I recommend that you do because there are numerous test points and other features uh, to be pointed out about the machine regarding uh, confirmation of how the machine works. The new voltage regulator is on there now. It has a heat sink, as you can see. I put a small amount of the thermal conducting compound onto the heat sink and just screwed it on with a screw. It's freestanding, not very strong, but it's, it's good enough. 
when you handle any part like that, be sure to follow all the ESD guidelines. Uh, it, it's not supposed to take much handling. And then uh, use a clip on the leads when you solder the part. Don't spend too much time getting it too hot. And that should do it. And then uh, you should be ready to go with that. At least we're going to try that. I, I hope that's really what the problem is. We'll confirm that in just a bit. One other housekeeping thing, the jumper I mentioned goes from C23 positive to pin three of RC7. If you want, you don't have to do that. It's just that that squares the deal with the schematic diagram on it. They stated that it should go to pin three and, and you can conveniently test for 70 volts at that point. So that's what that's about. It's not mandatory, but I did it just to square it up. We're ready to test now. The first test that we're gonna run will be on the sheet I've set up. Pin three, if you have the jumper installed, you can test for 70 volts. Before we do that though, I need to get in my commercial for safety. Make sure that you know what you're doing with respect to where you're at. And if you don't feel qualified to work on electrical equipment, please don't. Just don't get started with it, okay? Just information only. And I'm an experimenter doing an experiment. So, with that having been said, we will now go ahead, plug in, and test for our first voltage on pin 3 with the jumper installed. Plug it in. We should get deflection of the meter for uh, set on the 300 volt scale, we should get 70. So now what we'll do is set up for the rest of them by moving the pin around with the machine off. Set up on the 60 volt scale. We've now moved over to test pin eight on RC8. That should give us, uh, it looks like 30 volts there. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Looks good. Now we'll continue with setting the pin. Ha, ah, was on the wrong setting. It's hard to see here, I'm trying to make the film at the same time. So now we move to uh, pin seven. And for let's go ahead and see, do we have, uh, set this right, we should have 18 volts, we should get a deflection. And we do. So that's the good news there. We've got uh, the voltages, yes. There's one other thing that should be confirmed before we go much farther. Most of the circuitry is working. I just want to confirm that the gas solenoid is still working as it should. So just a simple test would confirm that. And it is. You can hear it. And then it should time out. Just check the basic functions before you go too far. Okay. The goal of all the exercises is to get back where we'd been with the actual polarity relay here, as it's called. It's got to be singing. It's not singing right now due to other problems on the board. So that's our, our goal. I've got uh, some footage that demonstrates how it's supposed to sound. Hear that? When we get to that point, we'll be ready for further testing. So when I was testing a number of these test points before I got the power supply going again, I was starting to find positive uh, 40 volts on RC71 and negative 40 volts on our 15 leg that goes into pin 2 of A1. And then I found 40 volts on test point RC74 and summarily found RC75 also seemed to have 40 volts on it. So that's not good, and uh, I'm concerned that not only have, have we lost the uh, operational amplifier, probably the first part of the U1 or the NAND gate. The way those NAND gates work, if there's an input on either the input pins like 1 and 2, 3 will show a voltage. It'll be a logic level voltage indicating positive, and that could be 5 volts or slightly less. The voltages are standing out really not good at all. Uh, 
I'm already thinking again here, the A1 is not working. If you're looking at the OP amp strictly from the OP amp standpoint, it should have zero voltages on those pins. The amp itself will fight to make sure that happens. Uh, and the artificial ground measurement from A12 to A13, look at that, it's 1.5 volts over a negative 38. There's definitely something wrong there. I never have owned an oscilloscope before now, but I decided for a hundred bucks it's probably worth it to go ahead and run confirmation tests on these strange voltages I've been getting and see if there is some way to further isolate what the problem is. So this test repeats something from another video. We're testing a test point, special test point on R33. Should have about 15 volts positive. Instead, we're getting about 42 volts negative. You can see that I've reversed the polarity here. After all those wacky voltages and problems, I decided the best thing to do is to go ahead and follow my instincts and replace the A1, the U1, and the U2. And after I did that, I felt that uh, I was on course for a, at least some type of repair attempt. And then the D10 Zener diode also, I went ahead and replaced using the upgrade of a 3-watt diode versus a 1-watt just to be on the safe time, uh, side. And when I checked the voltages, they came down to like 24 volts across the input pins. If you do have to make a board level repair, take your time with the soldering and clean it up. It's really gotta be a good, good connection. When you're finished with the soldering, be sure to recoat the board with some type of sealant, such as a spray on urethane or possibly a light epoxy. Based on what's happened and the type of repairs that have been required, I've decided to go ahead and build a new transformer using number 30 wire throughout. I'm going to have 10 turns on the primary, close to the beginning of the coil form, and then there'll be about 400 turns on the secondary, all of course with the number 30 wire, and they will be coated layer upon layer with the coatings of the polyamide tape. I believe that doing it that way there's no way that the machine can be too overly excited and no further repairs should be required. This is the first pass of about 60 turns on the coil here. Now I figured out that this time around I want 3900 volts or so in the secondary. So that's about 10 passes total. And I hope that that gets it done. I don't want to have to make another one, but if I do, I do. All the windings are ready now. All 660 on the secondary of number 30 wire. So we're ready to connect the, the terminals. Uh, I've checked it for continuity. It look, looks pretty good. And hopefully this is the transformer that will get it done. Just about ready to refasten to the base. Wires are on. Everything's looking good. Almost ready. I keep mentioning that I want the relay to sing. So after thinking about it, I came back and changed this capacitor out. This was like 10 nanofarads. And I put in, it looks like, uh, make sure about this before I say that, point zero zero five picofarads so there's hardly any capacitance and it's going to make a difference as it turns out so i'm going to demonstrate it and you'll hear the sound that i'm kind of looking for 
if that sound isn't there, we don't have much. So let's give it a shot. You hear, you hear that. So that's a basic thing. And it may come down to this capacitor. Again, I'm an experimenter, so if it's not cut and dried, there's no way I can control for that. But now we've got something we can test. Got a project here I've been trying to do for months, so I want to see if I can weld it. Hopefully. I got a little bit of the way. I'm not really a welder, I have to confess, but I got a little bit. This was what I was trying to get done before the machine broke. So, I kind of got it tapped. I'll just have to stay at it. Well, I think this has been quite a video. And I, I may make some more changes, but maybe not. If I do, I'll make another video and I'll let everybody know. One thing to look out for is heating. So we're going to check the transformer up here, the one that I made. And that's uh, it's hard to see on the camera here. 879. So let's check the rest of it. 65 on that coil, 200 on, I guess, the main coil. Is this a 24 volt one here? Regardless. So we're getting up to where we're reaching the that duty cycle, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. We don't want to go too far beyond that because this machine isn't made to take a lot of heat. So that's some good information to have. Check how hot it's getting. No, it's not perfect, but it's it's quarter inch aluminum. It's on there. It's an important bracket for a milling machine a digital indicator. I had to put it off for months while I worked on the machine. So I got it done and uh, I've got plenty to learn about welding. So, it does work.